question. What was one of the very last uses of aerosols with CFC propellants? A super important life or death aerosol. Answer at the end of the video. How has ozone depletion changed over time? Well, uh, before man came along, volcanoes exploding would blow a hole in the ozone layer. But let's assume the IB are talking about man-made ozone destruction. So CFCs started to reach the ozone layer in large quantities about 60 years ago and started to punch a hole in the ozone layer. But since the Montreal Protocol, which we'll talk about a bit later, came along, ozone-destroying chemicals such as CFCs are being used less and less, and the ozone is finally starting to heal. What have we done as a global community to reduce ozone depletion? Well, I've made this video, but on a grander scale, the Montreal Protocol, 1987, described by the UN Secretary General as perhaps the single most successful international treaty to date, that was uh, signed by many countries to phase out the use of these ozone-destroying CFCs. Uh, the developing countries had a little more time to phase out these CFCs, but it's an enormous success. And so I think the IB are going to ask about the fact it's a global problem, so it needs global solutions. To what extent is ozone depletion an example of both a success and failure for solving international environmental concerns? Well, let's start with the failures. Well, they didn't manage to fix the global warming greenhouse gas problem. Uh, so it wasn't as if this great Montreal Protocol could be applied to other air problems. Uh, it didn't really address the stockpiles. There were still loads of these chemicals that had been made by factories that hadn't been used, and those stockpiles were eventually used. They weren't destroyed. Uh, and it didn't cover all the ozone-depleting chemicals. For example, dichloromethane wasn't covered. But let's look at some of the good stuff. It reduced about 100 ozone depletion chemicals by about 100%. So eventually there was total success at removing these chemicals from our production facilities. And richer countries helped poorer countries. There was an exchange of technologies. And the answer to the question I posed at the beginning is, is the aerosol uh, that people with asthma use.